Category 4 Hurricane Matthew, take a look. With sustained winds of 145 miles per hour moving north tonight over the Caribbean. Here's the storm, 145 mile an hour winds and torrential rains on the eastern flank of the there. Here's the official track, Jamaica, eastern Cuba, you're going to get it as well, and then the Bahamas, and then by Thursday and Friday, it's abreast of the U.S. Hey, usually I don't uh, vlog on Tuesdays, but today is a special day. We got uh, kind of an emergency situation. If you don't know, Hurricane Matthew is about to approach us. Um, decided we're going to vlog the hurricane and what we do as a police department is a hurricane. So I'm headed down now to a meeting that's going to go on with all the chiefs, majors, the, all the staff members are going to be down there. They're going to be discussing their plan of action and what they're going to be doing for the hurricane. So I'm about to head down now. I'm going to take you guys with me so you can get a little insight as into how a police department prepares for an emergency situation such as a major hurricane, which is threatening to um, hit us. So headed down there now. And I gotta kind of be quiet because there's gonna be a whole bunch of cheese and stuff in there, so I gotta be quiet. Alright, oh, guys, the chief just got here. So these, about to start. these are the latest updates as of the uh, 2 p.m. Uh, advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, Hurricane Matthew continues to track along a projected path uh, along the Florida coastline and remains a Category 4 storm with sustained wind speeds of up to 145 miles an hour. What is your recommendation that we do next? I'd recommend uh, activating Phase 1. You know, the uh, mobilization phases, Phase 1 and 2 being uh, the annexes on the uh, Commander's Task Checklist, uh, the watch phases. Any plan for the homeless? Yeah. Okay, we'll open up. Uh, emergency shelter beds, cots, mats in four locations to take as many homeless off the streets as possible. So with our district majors, with our extra resources, let's make sure we beef up business areas and places that uh, people congregate, whether they congregate or not. Um, areas of concern that you that you believe uh, need some attention and um, we'll follow the plan that way. Chief, as of now we're only canceling uh, E days, e days of for Thursday, Thursday and Friday. For Both Thursday, days, Thursday and Friday, Friday, but we'll we'll let them know that we'll give them plenty of notice if we do decide to cancel Friday as well. I mean, I suspect we're we're gonna know much more by midday tomorrow. So as you hear, they're gonna cancel all the days off on Thursday for police officers. That means all the police officers are gonna be here. All right, guys, on his way out, I grabbed uh, Lieutenant Costello here. You guys might know him. He's from the uh, Running Man Challenge. He was in the bomb, so you couldn't really see his face. But here I am. But there he is in the flesh. Live and in living color. <laughs> there he is in the flesh. So he agreed to come here and speak a little bit about what was being set up there as far as the officers having their days off. First of all, you're the commander of the bomb squad as well, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So he also does the bomb squad. Um, as well as the Office of Emergency Management, correct? Yes, I do. So what does the Office of <laughs> I can't talk right now. So what does the Office of Emergency Management uh, do? Well, basically, Nick, uh, we manage emergencies. <laughs> Realistically, what the Office of Emergency Management is tasked to do is uh, provide uh, advice to the chief of police on all matters uh, that may impact uh, the city of Miami, whether it's severe weather, uh, which is the case with Hurricane Matthew. We just provided a briefing based on information that we received from the National Hurricane Center on what we can expect and how we should prepare uh, in order to safeguard our community. So what, what was the outcome of that? I heard there's something about days off or something canceled. Basically what we're looking at is potential uh, tropical storm force uh, conditions uh, starting early Thursday morning and possibly lingering into mid to late afternoon on Friday. What the chief uh, has implemented is he's going to cancel the days off for all patrol officers uh, on Thursday and potentially on Friday. So what's the purpose behind like that, canceling some the officers days off? Well basically the chief wants to ensure that we have appropriate staffing levels to uh, make sure we meet the, the needs of the community following a potential landfall of uh, tropical storm conditions or any other uh, effects of uh, severe weather. In addition to their routine duties of patrolling and answering calls for service, they're going to be tasked with security of uh, commercial and residential areas to make sure that if we have uh, 
power outages or people that have evacuated from their homes or anything like that or may not be in their homes to make sure that there's no looting or excessive thefts taking place. They're going to be doing preliminary damage assessments and identify areas of concern such as standing water, down power lines, things of that nature. Awesome. So many hats we have to wear, one of them being the eyes and ears out there when a hurricane happens. I uh, appreciate the time. Anytime, sir. Appreciate you getting me again with Cop Life. <laughs> you guys are three for three. All right, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let me run to this webinar. All right, take it easy. The tip of Cuba and the Bahamas as we head into Wednesday. In fact, the latest uh, models all bring a little bit more that stays just off to the east of Florida. But look how close of a call this is. We have to watch this very carefully. We'll a couple miles even farther west. All right, guys, so this is where the hurricane is at right now. It's currently 5.30 on Tuesday. We're going to do this like on a day-to-day -day thing, how we get prepared for the hurricane. We're going to try to vlog every day a little bit. So we'll be back tomorrow early in the morning. Here is Matthew on satellite. Get the latest update. Is it again north of Cuba? and now it's going to be impacting the Bahamas. So it's going to be moving through the Bahamas into Thursday. And uh, as we get into uh, late Thursday into Friday, it's going to be possibly moving towards Florida. So as a police officer, you have to be ready for the hurricane. That means getting your stuff ready at work and also getting your stuff ready at home. So you got to make sure your house is secured, everything's secured, because more than likely you're going to be working during the hurricane. If you have any kids, you gotta make sure somebody's there to watch them. It's a difficult time because obviously you want to stay with your family to make sure they're all right. But uh, you know, this is the job that you applied for, and you work the holidays, you work different shifts, and you work emergency situations such as hurricanes. Just got to the station. It's Tisha Fierce's birthday, and you know she's super fierce, so I got her this card. Check it out. Oh yeah, happy birthday, Miss Fierce. All right, done with the artwork for Tisha Fierce's birthday card. Let's get started to sign it. Happy birthday, man. How old are you today? I mean, I don't. Nick, Nick, do you think this is mine? No. Come on. Come on. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Hey. No, open your door. Open them up. Special one. That's your favorite. Donut cam. Donut cam. On her birthday. Oh my gosh. Get that camera out of my face. Why? It's your birthday. And I know all the 15s on the vlog want to wish you a happy birthday too, so happy birthday. Wow. We're not going to ask how old you are because that's not nice. No, it's not. No. What? So, <laughs> who, who wrote this? You? That was from us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. There wasn't one that roared. <laughs> so you got a cat. Who drew this? You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow I'll be coming in at 6 a.m. and I'll be off of work at 6 p.m. But if the hurricane is too bad, I'm just gonna have to camp it out here and wait till my next shift. And so now we're gonna head upstairs where Lieutenant Castell is gonna be on a webinar with the National Weather Service getting some updates. Then once he gets the updates, then he um, relays that to the Chief of Police. So we're gonna go up there now and check it out. Uh oh. All right. All right. He's gonna be doing the webinar with the uh, National Weather Service, and uh, LT is letting us sit in. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rob Moyeda of the National Weather Service in Miami. 
uh, as he remains an extremely dangerous uh, Category 3 hurricane um, that will be capable of widespread and extensive damage along the east coast of Florida. Tropical storm force winds, uh, if you're looking at arrival time, as early as Thursday morning, so uh, uh, after sunrise uh, tomorrow morning, um, and continuing the threat at least uh, uh, into Friday evening with storm, with the, the winds most likely beginning down in Miami Dade County, and then the last of the winds will exit the area around like a Chobie and Palm Beach County. All right, LT. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Take care. Be safe. All right. Okay, so you heard Lieutenant Castell. He was on a web seminar with about 300 other people from uh, emergency services across Florida. They were formulating a plan according to what the National Weather Service Advisory was telling them what was going on with Hurricane Matthew. So basically they get the information, they go bring that to their chief, and then they formulate a plan on how to provide service to the community they serve. So in this case, uh, Lieutenant Costello, we left, he was still on the web seminar, but they were wrapping it up. Uh, shortly after, he's gonna go run the information through his chain of command, and then uh, bring the information to the chief so they can formulate a plan. I'm gonna head home now, get ready for tomorrow. I have to be in at 6 a.m., and that's uh, around when Hurricane Matthew should be making landfall in Florida, so. Looking at the track of this, if this storm tracks right down the middle, if it brushes that coast and stays a little bit offshore, you are going to have slightly weaker winds than say if this storm pushed on shore, that's when you could have catastrophic uh, 120 mile per hour winds plus on shore with all of the storm surge as well as the very, very heavy rainfall. I normally park up on the top of the roof, but today I got the shelter overhead just in case. Attention roll call. Good morning. Attention roll call. HF patrol. Uh, today and days like this is when the city of Miami meet, needs you and we need you. We are here with you and so I want to thank you for coming in. Just so you know, B-Shift will be coming in at 1800 hours. So you will not be going home until they show up. And we have spoken to them and we told them these guys on A-Shift are waiting on them. patrols um, days off were canceled so they have a double amount of patrol officers here right now they're getting their orders um, from their respective sergeants so our shift is going to end at 6 p.m. and the other patrol units will be coming in to relieve us if the winds are too strong we're gonna have to ride out the storm here and what's up Jack photo bomb in the back Jack attack. So if the winds get too strong, we're gonna have to sit here and ride out the storm at the station. Uh, we won't be able to go home, and uh, we'll probably have to cover the, the probably have to cover the shift until the other officers can arrive to relieve us. So the officers are heading out to their details now. I'm gonna put my stuff away. I'm gonna show you guys a little more of what's going on here and how we're getting ready for Hurricane Matthew. Morning, Sergeant. Uh, Keisha and Caesar are going to be off today and tomorrow. So there will be no. Wow! Sergeant, I'm going to go downstairs and show them the Alpha Bravo tables. Do we? All right. So right now we're in a modified Alpha Bravo. It's not a true Alpha Bravo shift. Like I said before in previous vlogs, we have three shifts, A, B, and C. Alpha Bravo will cut out one shift and it'll be 12 hour shifts where it's just A and B. If we go to a true Alpha Bravo, all the detectives, all the, hey, what's up, Jack? What's going on? What's going on, man? You get ready for the storm? 
Not really. Not really. All right. Well, prepared. He's prepared, but not ready. <laughs> so if we go to a true Alpha Bravo, um, all the detectives, all the investigators, they'll be called in, and uh, they'll be called in for manpower. They'll be assigned to some kind of patrol task. Once they come in, they'll come to the manpower desk. They'll check in and they'll get their assignment where they're gonna be at Central, South, or the North Station. How you doing? So, you ready for the hurricane? I'm ready. Alright. Got your rain gear? Got my rain gear, got my flashlight, got my food clothes, everything I'm ready. Okay, she's ready. So as of now, the desks are set up. But we're not yet in a true Alpha Bravo phase. So they're just set up just in case the storm takes a turn, gets a little worse and uh, we have to call in all of the manpower or woman power. Probably the most important thing to find out here at the police department. We gotta make sure, Let's see. Yep, cap series open, we're good, we're good. Let's pop in on uh, Lieutenant Castell. Um, See if there's any updates. He should be in the emergency operations center. Let's see if anybody's home. LT. Hey, Nick. Hey, good morning. All right. Uh, any updates today? Well, uh, just making sure everything we activated the police EOC here. Right. So we're making sure that everything is up and running. And uh, the last update we got from the National Weather Service was just a short while ago. They said that we are going to start seeing increases in wind speeds. Uh, between 7 and 9 a.m. So we put that information out to uniform patrol officers just so they're aware. Okay, and what is this area that we're in here? What is this called? This is what we call an EOC. It's okay. the Emergency Operations Center. Okay. Uh, it's part of the incident command system and it's where we uh, command and control major incidents, major events such as this uh, hurricane preparation. Uh, you can see on some of the walls here we keep tabs on all the local media outlets so we can get uh, updates on any information that they're putting out to the public, as well as any reactions that we're seeing out in the streets. It kind of lends an extra eyes and ears okay. to, uh, to our patrol officers. Uh, over here, right up here, we have this interactive uh, computer monitor, and this is uh, a program we call the HuraVac. Okay. It uh, gives us up to the minute information directly from the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. And it lets us plot uh, exactly where the uh, hurricane is tracking, uh, where the cone of concern lies, and uh, wind speeds, uh, and probabilities, and all that. All right. So I appreciate it. We'll be back visiting and dropping on you. Thanks right. for the info as well. Fantastic, sir. All right. Have a good one. Be all right. safe, Nate. All right. Let's keep on moving. Got the rain gear on. We're gonna head out now and assess the uh, situation before Matthew makes landfall. And we just fogged up. Overlooking downtown, as you see, the storm is rolling in. Usually, there'd be boats tied up here. There'd be cruise ships all along here. But since once they get word of the uh, the hurricane coming, they move them out, put them in another location. The only boats that are out there are some tugboats there. They have the protection around the walls, so when it does hit against the wall, uh, it doesn't do too much damage. So you got a couple tugboats, but mainly all the uh, the port is clear.
here with Senior Executive Bernat. What's going on? Good morning. I'm out here with the homeless outreach team. All right. And our officers are out here to help as many unsheltered homeless as possible to get out of the weather. Are you going to be here like throughout the day? We're going to be out rounds? here throughout the whole day as long as it doesn't get too dangerous for us. Sometimes you get guys that are that they might say, nah, we don't really want it. And then it picks up a little bit and they're like, okay, where, where do we go? That's correct. That's why we're out here. We're out here persuading all the... Uh, individuals that are maybe a little reluctant to go into shelter and make sure they uh, get into a safe place. All right, cool. So you stay safe, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Always an honor, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Later. All right, guys, wind are picking up a little bit, but uh, we're going to keep moving. As long as it's safe to be outside, we're going to be vlogging. Matthew's coming. We're starting to get what's called feeder bands. They're right around here. You see them rolling in. So we have little breaks in between the feeder bands where it's a little bit calm and then it starts up again. It's now 12.40. Gonna head outside and do a Facebook Live uh, update. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So, is that you? <laughs> guys, this is what happens when you get bored and no one comes in at the front desk. You gotta remix the remix. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> All right, we're on in five. Four. No, I'm just kidding. How are you doing? Good. Hey, how's everything? So you are the official... Um, I'm the city's emergency manager. There you go. I work for the fire department, but, uh, but I'm the city's uh, emergency manager. Okay, awesome. So you're managing on what's going on here? That's good. Well, this is a partial activation okay. of our emergency operations center. And mm -hmm. what we do is we coordinate all of the city's assets. So we're coordinating public works, sanitation, uh, police department, fire department, anybody that needs any kind of assistance during this hurricane, that's what we do. After the hurricane, what we do is we help the citizens and we help businesses recover. We help the city get back to its normal functions. Okay. So um, who's who's here now? You mentioned a couple of them. Yeah. Well, what we got is we got public works here. Right. We got the police department here. We okay. got the fire department here. Okay. I got members of the urban search and rescue team here. Right. I got members of the finance department. I got procurement here. Okay. So we got key operational people here right now. If this event were to strike the city of Miami as a direct hit, right. And we have you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars in losses, then we would activate this entire room that you see here and we'd have a, a plethora of people assisting us. What we see here is, is as we get requests for assistance, as you see it there, we have a, a computerized system called Web EOC, right. and we will notify the department responsible for whatever the request is through the computerized system. They, in turn, will dispatch their own resource. So in other words, if I got somebody drowning in the water and I got to dispatch a firefighter or the fireboat to that call, It'll come in, we put it on a screen, the, the fire department is monitoring that screen, they get a tickler and then they will call their dispatch center and say, hey, this is what we got. Or if police department has a, uh, they say, yeah, a civil disturbance or whatever it might be, again, it pops up there and we send the resources right from here. Well, appreciate your time. Thank you, I guys. know you're a busy man. You got handling a lot of stuff here. Yeah. We got a, I got a lot of good people helping us, so. All right, so you got a awesome stuff. People helping us. Oh, she wants to be. She wants to be no, on no, the no, bike. No, no, she no, wants no. to be on the Here doing safety checks and uh, see one of the uh, lieutenants here need assistance. 
So we're gonna come out and help. All right, so one of the main focuses when there's a hurricane that comes through is checking up on the citizens and also the businesses. Now when the hurricane comes through, businesses all close shop. People park their vehicles, go inside their house, and uh, they remain in their house for the remainder of the hurricane. Well, uh, one of the majors was driving around making sure everything was calm and clear, and he noticed a known burglary offender um, checking handles of parked cars. That's a common practice of car burglars. They go around, um, it's not only just smashing the window and entering inside the car, but they'll go around pulling handles, looking for a car that's unlocked so then they can go inside. That's why it's important that you guys always lock your car doors whenever you get out. So, um, the major observed them doing that. Uh, once he saw the major, he tried to hide. Uh, major stopped him to do an, an investigative stop, and it turns out that the subject had some drug paraphernalia on him. Um, to be more specific, he had a crack pipe on him. So, he was taken to jail. Um, you know, that's just something when you're out here making sure everything's safe, you're just looking at everything and anything that's going on to make sure everything's all right while this storm goes through. So we're gonna continue heading back out, checking around, making sure uh, people are off the streets, making sure businesses are all right while, while the hurricane passes over, and uh, we're gonna keep moving. It's now six o'clock and it, it looks as though we're definitely not gonna get a direct hit since the eye now is moving past us here in Miami. So that's definitely good news. Hopefully I can get out of here soon. Just heard a call go out not too far from where we're at here. Uh, stabbing in Alapata. We're gonna go by and um, check it out. Getting close to the call, and we're going through another band. A lot of rain, a lot of rain. Problem when it rains fast like this, it starts to flood. Large amounts of rain in a short period of time equals a flood. So hopefully, uh, for now, it looks good. Hopefully, it stays like that. Fire rescue's on the scene. A couple units. apparently the scene of where the incident took place. I'm still trying to figure things out. There's still an investigation going. Right now there's some officers on the scene. There's an officer en route to the subject that had a laceration to his hand. Uh, still trying to figure out the details. Um, so domestic violence unit, a DV detective is en route and they're gonna continue on the investigation. But just to go to show you that uh, when it's raining, and things happen, we still have to respond. So, I mean, the rain's not that bad. We've had worse when thunderstorms came through, and we worked through that as well. So, all right, I'm gonna head back to the car and uh, keep it moving. big one. Hurricane Matthew is a ginormous storm, 140 mile per hour winds. Thankfully, we didn't get hit with uh, too strong of winds. It was light rain here and there, on and off. We just got some of those feeder bands, but uh, Hurricane Matthew is gonna make landfall just north of us. So our thoughts and prayers go out to all the cities and different states that are gonna be affected by Hurricane Matthew. Uh, we hope for the best and we're gonna be keeping an eye on Hurricane Matthew because the weather forecaster is predicted to make a U-turn and come back towards Florida. So we're gonna keep an eye on it. Again, you saw a little bit about what we do as a police department. 
when a hurricane or an emergency situation comes about and how we handle it as a police department. Our officers will be out throughout the remainder of the night. They're gonna be vigilant. They're gonna keep an eye on the situation. Um, a lot of times when it rains a lot, the ground gets real wet, the tree's roots uh, get real wet and a gust of wind can knock down a tree. Branches have been swaying all day, so a gust of wind can break a branch down. We wouldn't want any kind of branches or trees falling on anybody or even power lines. So we ask our residents, our citizens of uh, Miami to stay inside until they get the all clear. And uh, we'll be continuing to do our job out here throughout the night. So I'm Nick with Miami PD. You guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and most of all, be safe.